Hey! <laughs> we are live. <laughs> we are live. Hey, you guys, I'm Katie Krause. And I'm Denny Directo. Thanks for hanging out with us here at ET. Live. Yeah, Justin Prentice is here from 13 Reasons Why. If you've hey. binge watched season two, you are in for some serious treats because we are going to ask him everything about it. If not, we want to give you a little bit of a warning. Spoilers are yes. coming your way. We're saving them towards the end of it, though. Yes. So stick around. So stick around yeah. right now. Send in your questions if you have any. Yeah. We'll make sure that he gets them. But, um, Let's get right into it. Let's do it. Season two, when it picked up, it's two months after season one ends. Mm -hmm. Is that where you thought the story was going to go? We're obviously in trial. We have testimonies mm. from everyone. Yeah, they kind of told us uh, at the end of, of season one, if we were to do a second season, it would probably go litigious. Yeah. And we get into that side of things, which was exciting um, and uh, something we all kind of look forward to. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool. There are a lot of twists throughout the season that we absolutely did not see coming, mm. which is fun. What was <laughs> the biggest twist? Um, spoiler. Maybe spo possibly spoiler. coming. Yeah. Just mute for a uh, second. Um, I, I don't know. I think one of the biggest ones for me that I that didn't see coming was uh, Zach and Hannah, because that one wasn't really foreshadowed all that mm. much. Yeah. Mm. Um, you have the whole gun storyline. Right. My whole case getting let off easy kind of mirrors the Brock Turner case, so it's reality. So there were kind of hints like sort of along the way, but I feel like that one was just kind of a blind sight out of nowhere. Right. But it was super, it was really exciting. It though. was really exciting, and that's what's so amazing about this season is obviously season one we kind of uh, try and map out what led to Hannah's suicide, and right. this one we really get to see um, that the entire. A cast of characters has secrets and also has some secret relationships with Hannah. There's yeah, a, there's a, 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 untold stories there about their relationships there, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of it, it builds the whole world that Absolutely. I think season one started. Yeah. It connects the dots a little bit more. It yeah. does, um, and goes deeper, especially with your character. Yeah, uh, I mean, what was your reaction when you first read the scripts? Did you get them all at once, or was it in piecemeal? No, so we film like in two episode blocks. Right. Um, so we kind of get them one at a time usually. Mm -hmm. And then we'll, we'll get one, a week later we'll get the next, and then it'll be like three weeks-ish until we get the next script again. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we're always hanging on the edge of our seats right. too, wondering you were, what's gonna you were happen You were saying you are reacting and like immediately texting. Yeah, we'll all call else, each other and yeah. text, and or the first time we see each other in person, we're like, did you read it? What, what's going on? What's, yeah. oh my gosh, this right. is crazy. When you found out what was going to happen to your character, and you mentioned the Brock Turner case, mm -hmm. of course, was that intentional, like, to mimic what happened with that? I think so. I mean, yeah. our show is, it's fictional and there are dramatized events. Sure. Um, but one thing that it tries to do is, is, is sort of, like, mirror reality in a sense and kind of put up a mirror and spotlight mm. the issues that, that our country specifically is dealing with, but really all over the world. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Bryce is, is privileged, comes from a powerful family, he's a straight white male, and so it's easier for him to get off, and we see that happening all the time, and it sucks. Yeah. And I know fans are going to be super pissed off, <laughs> uh, but you should be pissed off, because right. that's, you know, that's the reality right now. Is that the point, that mm -hmm. justice was not really served? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, because I think there were different forms of justice throughout the show. You know, I think, like... Alicia, her character Jessica, kind of, she comes to terms with what happened. She's finally mm -hmm. able to look Bryce in the eyes and and point him out and say, "You did this to me," and that's a that's such a huge step for her. So in her own Absolutely. way, I think that's kind of her justice and coming yeah. to terms with everything. Yeah. Um, in terms of actual legal justice, right? You know, Bryce just kind of gets a slap on the wrist and a you know, don't do it again, you little yeah, rascal, which right. is so screwed. But uh, but yeah, it's it's realistic. Yeah, there's no way to put it except that Bryce is the bad guy. You know, kinda, he's the bad yeah, guy. Yeah, a little bit. I little mean, bit. do you feel like you kind of, as an actor, take one for the team? Like, there's a responsibility <laughs> to play this like person people loathe, and you someone's, did a good job of making us feel that way. Well, you know? someone's got to do it. I yeah, guess, right. You honestly. know, and, and I knew what I was signing up for you from did. the get go, and um, I try not to be a, a huge horrible person in my day to day <laughs> life. So as an actor, it's kind of rewarding to, yeah. to stretch a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's enjoyable, I Is suppose. It? Yeah, <laughs> in a weird way. Right. Was there any hesitation knowing that people might actually hate you? They might have a hard time, you know, deciphering between you and, so and this character. You know? Yeah. And they're so Thank invested you. in these characters. Which too. is great, which we love. Right. Um I, yeah, you know, when I first signed on, I didn't know how big of a success the show was going to be. Mm. We didn't know it was going to be this kind of cultural phenomenon. Right. Um we were just hoping it would touch a few people positively and maybe influence some people for the better, but we didn't know it was just gonna erupt the way it did. So mm -hmm. originally signing on, I 
I figured I would get a little bit of hate, but I just didn't know the extent of which I would get the hate. But no. uh, but it's kind of an honor, I guess. Sure. You know? uh, there's a couple comments coming in actually oh, wow. about that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Pizza Blurry from YouTube wants to know what is uh, the hardest part of playing Bryce. Um, I think, as an actor, when you're playing the villain, you kind of you have to justify the actions, mm -hmm. which is weird because I come from a family of, you know, always respect women. My mom and dad both brought in equal income. They both switched off cooking and cleaning dishes and everything. So Amazing. it was a very equal kind of relationship, yeah. which was beautiful to grow up with. Um, so that's kind of been ingrained in me since I was a child. So having to overcome that and justify Bryce doing these abhorrent actions, I think, was one of the toughest things. Mm -hmm. not, not that it justifies what he did, just as an actor, you sure. have to... Sure find a way to make it make sense in the character's mind, Absolutely. which is kind of tricky. Did your parents watch? Yes. Oh, <laughs> they what, have. Yeah. what's been their response? Um, you know, the, it's really interesting. They've done a great job of, I think, separating me from the character, which is really cool because they know that I'm not Bryce. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so they kind of watch it as if I'm not their son, in a sense, as if they're just kind of watching any other actor, actor. bring a role to life. Um, and good I've strategy. been doing this for, yeah. It's it a is. good strategy. And I've been doing this for, for kind of a, for almost a decade now. So they understand sort of how the industry works right. and, and all of that. But it can't be easy. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. No, I, I don't think it was easy. Grandparents haven't watched it, probably won't, probably sh shouldn't. <laughs> and you told us earlier, neither have you, right? I No, I haven't watched you it You haven't either. watched it either. Not yeah. even season one. I've seen the first two episodes of season one oh. because they played them at our premiere. Right. And I was sort of locked in totally. to watching it and wasn't allowed to leave the theater. But <laughs> Were you watching like this? Yeah. I was you know, just like, like occasionally. I wasn't in the first two episodes that much, so I was like, okay, I think I can I can make it through this. Yeah. Yeah. Just insecure actor stuff. <laughs> don't, don't, hey, don't worry Johnny Depp feels it. the same way about his work, you know? Yeah. It's fair. A few yeah, other comments are coming in. Um, Jada Bannister says, how do you deal with the hate that you get from playing the role? Um, do you get hate? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Okay. It's not usually like, oh my gosh, I love Bryce, he's amazing. Well, right. you know, yeah. Usually, <laughs> yeah, that, that's fair. Yeah. Which is good. Um, I, I, I take it all kind of as a compliment, I yeah. think. Uh, it just means I did my job at least somewhat well, I suppose. Yeah. If, if people have a hard time differentiating me from the character, then that's, you know, I, I feel like I did my work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I also try not to think about it too yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> You mentioned that your parents watched it, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of parents out there who don't feel like they want their kids to watch this. Sure. They're calling for Netflix to maybe pull down the show. Do you yeah. feel like that backlash is warranted? Or what, how do you respond you to know, that? You know, I, I see where they're coming from, but at the same time, I, again, as I said, one of the jobs of our show is, is to reflect reality. Mm -hmm. So this stuff is already going on in these high schools. You know, yeah. these kids are already experiencing it in their day-to-day -day lives. Mm -hmm. So... So having a show where we address these issues, even if you don't necessarily agree with the way that we address them, um, the fact that we're addressing them and raising these conversations, I think it kind of bridges the gap. You know, mm. if parents wanted to watch it with their children, again, maybe you don't agree with the way that we show it, but that's a, that's a conversation starter. And it, yeah. it bridges that generational gap, and I think it makes uh, the conversation a little easier to begin, you know, mm -hmm. for, for kids opening up to parents and parents to kids, vice versa, yeah. and even kids amongst their friends. Um, at the end of the day, controversy or not, you know, people are talking, you know, talk about these issues, because that's right, the first right, step right. in changing, you know. And I will say something I noticed watching this season compared to last was that the in, in the script and in the dialogue, I felt like a lot of the messages were a lot more pointed. You guys were a lot more deliberate with trying to get uh, that message across. Yeah. You know? So in a lot of ways, I mean, I feel like, don't you feel like there's a responsibility there? I think there, there kind of is, you know? It's, it's one of those, like... <sighs> There's so many issues in our society right now that can be changed if we just work towards changing mm -hmm. them. So season two is very much like, okay, let's just cut right to the point. Right. Yeah. This is I what's going that. on. Be mad about it. Be mm. upset about it. Get angry and let's, you know, let's change things. Totally. There's this really um, big moment at the end where you see that montage of women all sharing their yeah. experiences with sexual assault. I'm curious if you know if that was written before the Me Too and the Time's Up movement came to be what you I'm know, trying to think because I remember being on set when when the whole Weinstein case came to fruition. Yeah. Um, and that was one of the big talking points we were we were mentioning on set, but I don't remember exactly what episode we were filming because we also had a lot of reshoots. So on any sure. given day we were filming like episode 11 and 12 while also doing reshoots on episode 6 and episode 1 and 2 and mm -hmm. then so it's everything's kind of jumbled so I don't remember exactly where we were in filming it. Okay. Um, but I do remember showing up to set and all of us going, 
wow, this show is relevant more than ever. Right. This is this is this is crazy. I was going to ask you, like, how did that whole scandal and, of course, Harvey Weinstein and Times Up impact yeah. maybe the vibe of what you guys were doing? Yeah, I think it just makes it more worthwhile. Right. You know, it just it makes us want to work even harder than we already were. Right. Um, yeah, it's it it's an issue. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? yeah. Danielle Yates has a question for you. She's asking, how did you prepare for the dialogue scene with uh, your your mother in the show, where he tells her how he assaulted <sighs> Hannah? Because it was so intense. Yeah. yeah I was, was so excited though when she slapped, slapped you him. in the face. Another slapped. small form of justice. Yes, right. you know? yes. yeah. I was like, is she gonna do it? Do it. <laughs> and she did. And oh, she did, it's yeah. so good. And Brenda Strong is phenomenal. Oh. I just I love her as my right. mother. Um I, I, <laughs> lots of staring in the mirror and just <laughs> <laughs> running the lines with yeah. myself, just trying to I guess get it right. Um and then um on the day of, you know, we rehearsed it a couple of times and then just sort of in the moment you just kinda let everything go and, and sort of go for it. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah, hopefully it turned out well because it was really fun to film. Yeah. One of the most chilling scenes I think in the entire And it was building series. up, you know, yeah. his mother, yeah. you can tell uh, that she's like, I don't know if I believe him anymore. It, which you is know? interesting, there's a lot going on there oh, and, and yeah. Bryce's parents have never really been involved in his life right. so, so in Bryce's mind he's like, now all of a sudden you want to have a hand mm -hmm. in what's going on and he sort of just drops his facade and you see the monster kind of come yeah. through the cracks which is really interesting and his mother, you know, realizing like, yeah, this... Right. This is this is we we've, we've created a monster essentially. Was it easy for you to unplug from this character, unwind a little bit after shooting? Like once they yelled cut. Uh, you know, it depends. If it's if it's a lighter scene, it's it's a really kind of easy bounce yeah. in and out at this point. Um, but for the really dark scenes, you know, I'll oh, kind of go off and get in my own sort of headspace and stay in that. Yeah. And it takes a little longer to pull out of, but but we always try and. Go out and have a, you know, play board games, have a game night or something. Right, 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 right. Let loose. Yeah. And, and kind of along that same line, when you do break scene or you do break character, do you feel like you almost need to apologize <laughs> to the castmates? I mean, with the scenes with Jessica and with Chloe and yeah. with, the, with the woman who plays Sometimes there are a lot of check-ins, you know, through filming. Sure. Like, are you still okay? Are you doing all right? right Let right. me know. Um, so, so that helps, and, and they've always, every cast member has been super trustworthy of, of mm -hmm. me, which is yeah. immensely helpful. Um, but yeah, if anything, I think it, the relationship, the family that we've kind of built the cast, I think it makes it easier to jump into the character because I, I know that they don't see me that way. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, whereas doing a scene with a stranger afterwards, you're like, by the way, I'm not this and I'm so <laughs> yeah. But, but now that we've built up this sort of foundation of trust, it makes it easier to really just give, give it everything. It'd sure. be a lot different if it was day one of season yeah. one. You oh, know, yeah. You know, you had to like, right. Right. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have clearly built this like <laughs> rapport. Yeah. Which right? helps, yeah. yeah. You mentioned um, check-ins. And mm -hmm. I'm curious because Netflix implemented, you know, the PSA at the beginning of the episodes. Right. Do they offer anything to you guys because you are mm. getting so deep and dark in these characters? Yeah, they've been immensely helpful with resources. You know, we, we've all talked to psychiatrists about everything and, and uh, me specifically sexual assault preventative experts yeah, wow. and, and all of that, which is, which is awesome in terms of building the character but also for our own sort of mental state. Um, in season one, we had, um, uh, it, for the hot tub scene with, with Catherine, mm -hmm. they had like emotional support puppies on set, <gasps> which is adorable. And I asked, right? I asked Catherine afterwards, I was like, did you ever go to the, over to play with the dogs? She goes, no, I would have just crumbled. I was like, me too. I stayed oh, as far away as possible. Yeah. But, but it was great for the crew because sure. a lot of the crew has experienced these sort of mm -hmm. traumatic incidents. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, they, like they do everything that they possibly can to make sure everyone's taken That's care of. That's it's, great to it's hear. It's a really good vibe. On yeah. Set. yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what would you say is the biggest impact this role and this show has had on you as a person? Um, you know, I think how prevalent the issues are. Before starting the show, you know, I knew they existed and I knew it was going on, but I think in doing all of the re research and, and, and hearing all the statistics and really diving into this mm -hmm. world, you realize how frequently these issues are popping up and how mm -hmm. many people it affects. Um, I know the cast and I, and, and even producers, writers, directors, we've all talked amongst ourselves, and, and mentioning this show to our friends and family members have all had a bunch of people come forward wow. and be like, hey, something like this happened to wow. me, and it's like, oh, we never... Mm -hmm. Never knew, never realized. Right. Um, so I think that was one of the biggest things is how many people it really affects. Absolutely, yeah. And sparking that conversation is so important, I think. It is. And it's it's beautiful that, you know, have someone in your life that you've, you've known forever and, yeah. and then be like, hey, this happened to me. You know, like, that's a, that's a huge step for them mm -hmm. to come forward with something like that. And we, we get countless letters of people like, hey, 
my friends understand what I went through now because of the way you guys portrayed this or it made it easier for us to talk about this mm -hmm. for the first time in my life, yeah. which is, it's, it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful thing. There's a scene, obviously, this is another spoiler, so I just want to give you guys the heads up, but the show ends with an almost school shooting and Clay, mm -hmm. of course, um, stops that, it, yeah. prevents it from happening. Right. But it seems so reflective of what continuously is happening and most recently yeah. with the shooting in Houston. How yeah. do you speak to that and what do you think that says about your show? Again, you know, we try and stay as current as possible. Um, we have a bunch of different storylines this season, all mm -hmm. kind of touching on all of these important issues. Mass shootings, guns are obviously a, a, a big one. Um, again, just disclaimer, our, our characters are kids in high school and, and it, they are dramatized events and sure. it is a fictional show and uh, if you're in the position of Clay, go to an adult, call 911. No. There, there are better yeah. ways to handle that situation. This is a show and it is fictional. Thank you for saying um, that. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, so, um, but you know, our, our characters are flawed and I think that's kind of a beautiful thing too, mm. I think, especially like with season one, you see uh, Hannah's side of the story, but you also see it with season two some of you know the past and what has happened, right. and and there's there's murky water and there's murky territory, and 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 Clay doesn't always make the right decisions, and I think that's more human than anything, and again mm. that's another parallel to high school. You know, right. you don't always know how to address these issues, and our characters don't always go about it the right way. It's not a it's not a documentary, um, it's not a PSA, though we try to you know, help with these issues as much as we can. Um, but yeah, I mean, mass shootings, obviously it's a, it's a huge issue right now. And I'm, yeah. and I'm glad that in this, in this case, Clay's character was able to placate the, the scenario, yes. but that wouldn't necessarily always happen. In real life, for sure. Where do you think the story goes from there? There's already been talks about a potential season three. Right. Um, your character says, I think one of the last lines is, I'm gonna go start over, I'm transferring. Right, yeah, say to Dempsey, I, I'll see you on the football field. Right, Which is right, 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 right. crazy that that's, that's something Bryce would say, yeah. though. That's exactly what he would it's say. It's so messed up, but it it's, it's so Bryce, yeah. Yeah. I, I would love to do a third season. They haven't told us. Netflix hasn't they said haven't. anything. Um, I hope they tell us soon because mm. we're, all, we're all very anxious to find out. Right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I still think there is more to explore with, with, the, with the fallout. You know, it, it doesn't end there. Um, just be because Clay stopped this incident from happening mm. doesn't mean that... Tyler's okay right. in, in body and mind. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's more road to, to explore and, and we as a cast for, for sure are right. excited to explore it further if they let us. Well, and what about Chloe's pregnancy? Oh. Do you think that she changed her mind about testifying because she knew that she was I pregnant? think it's certainly a possibility. I yeah. think, I think right. that along with looking at Bryson in the eye and him being there made it way harder than she thought it was going to be right. to single him out. Um, Bryce is, is very manipulative. And as we saw in the flashback when they were kids, he wasn't always this monster of a person. Mm -hmm. So there are bits of goodness in Bryce and, and Bryce kind of can use that to manipulate people. And so right. I, think, I think she's kind of confused in that moment. She mm -hmm. doesn't really know what's up and what's down. Yeah. And she's remembering the good moments with Bryce and she's like, it, could he could be a good father maybe in a weird mm -hmm. way and it's it's a lot of conflict and i think that's what kind of silences her in that moment because it's hard to come forward and in a weird way bryce uh, it seems like he could protect and provide right so right that's he comes like from a wealthy family 100%. the kid's gonna have a college fund yeah. you know but at the same time you know all of this stuff is coming to light mm -hmm. and, and Bryce's empire is starting to crumble. And so um, I'm sure her character is, is very, very conflicted. I was going to say, do, and, oh, do sorry. you think that the topic of abortion would be something that is explored then in I season three? I think it three? very much yeah. could be. I think it very much could be. And it would be interesting to see how they handle it. Because right. from my point of view, Bryce comes from a powerful family and they have a way of making things disappear so mm. I don't know it, it, it'd be very interesting to yeah. see yeah what does redemption for Bryce look like <sighs> oh, is I it attainable <laughs> yeah a lot of people are asking that like yeah. do you think like he'll change does he feel remorse you know he I, again with the kid scene there's a human in there somewhere right, right, right. and I think uh, that was the trick for me was not painting him as this disconnected from reality sort of person mm -hmm. you know he, he's still in touch with the human side of things at least somewhat um, there is a person deep down in there. At this point, it's so ingrained in him what he's done. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think there is hope out there for the Bryces. 
I don't know that our writers will give Bryce any redeeming qualities mm. down the road, um, but it'll be interesting to find out. That's well said, yeah. though. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah. someone's got to take. You know what I mean? Like take the heat I guess to get so. the message across. I guess you know? so. But yeah. there is hope for the Bryces out there. I there believe is. That. There I really is. Do There's a that. human in there. Because again, you know, a, a lot of these uh, these instances of rape and sexual assault are from someone that you already know that's mm. in your trust circle. The majority of them happen from someone that you or your family already knows. You know, it's it's usually not a stranger. So. Um, a lot of these cases are just, you know, people who have lost their way or haven't been educated on what consent is or right. haven't been taught mm. how to respect women or how to respect human beings in general. Um, so that's something that can change as we start to have more of these conversations yeah. and influencing people. So there is hope out there. Just don't know if there is for Bryce. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> that's fair. Um, Selena Gomez is, of course, one of the executive producers. Mm-hmm. How involved was she this season? Um, she was pretty involved. They, they're at the table reads and everything. They'll like Skype in because they have, she and her mother have super busy schedules, but, um, but they'll Skype in and watch the table reads and and then I'm sure they give their sort of creative notes to the network heads and whatnot. I'm not involved in that side of it, so I don't know, but, but they always pop in, they come up, we'll have dinners and get together and talk about, you know, storyline and cast and, and that stuff, which is awesome. What did you make of Netflix's decision to cancel the premiere? I, I, I stand by it. I think yeah. it made sense in solidarity for what was going on. Um, again, with the gun issues in our own mm-hmm. show and the parallel to what happened in Texas, I, I, I think it was the right move. We didn't want to go out and totally. have this big fanfare premiere party celebration when something like that had just happened. Yeah. You know? It's heartbreaking across the board it for is. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You have so many questions I was gonna say, so, there's Yeah, a lot we're going to take some watching. of these right now. Thank you guys for watching. Wow. Um, okay. How have you dealt with fame on social media? Um, I, ooh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. I mean, I certainly monitor, I think, more what I post. Yeah. I'm kind of a perfectionist anyway. But, mm. um, yeah, I'm always very consciously aware of what I post and, and how it might be construed. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of crazy because with season one, it just, like, you know, I think all of us went from hundreds or potentially thousands to, like, millions of right. followers almost overnight. It's crazy to see, like, all the comments and all the likes you guys get on yeah. all your posts. But it's not thank you for the support. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think that Bryce cares for Chloe? Drina wants to know. Yeah, in in his own way, I think I think there is a lot of manipulation. I think it does look good for him and his image in terms of what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I think, I think more uh, Bryce wants to love her. I think mm. more than he actually loves her. I mm. think he really wants to. I think, yeah. I think in Bryce's mind, he likes the idea of putting this behind him and, and trying to go a straight and narrow if right. that's at all possible. He likes the idea. I think of eventually a, a family or kids or someone who you know his parents were never there. So he loves the affection. Mm-hmm. You know when when he gets it. So I think he likes the idea of Chloe or a Chloe or a close-knit relationship. Um, I don't know necessarily if Chloe is the one, but I think he likes the idea of it, yeah. Yeah. Something that Bryce's dad said that I loved was uh, a a woman who loves you is meant to be respected, not crossed. And I was like, You better preach, Dad. Get like it. that was really good. Get it. I wrote yeah. that down. <laughs> it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. But then at it the same note too, you also see the Walker side where, and you know what? This is interesting. I don't know if it ended up making it into the final cut, but I remember it being in one of the versions of the scripts. And it was essentially like she's gonna. Lo- it was something along the lines of she's gonna look good for the jury, or it doesn't matter. Right. Because I asked, do, do you think my mom likes her? It and does he's make like, it in. That is a f- okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think mom likes her? And and he's like, it's she's she looks good mm-hmm. for yeah. for the jury essentially. Same thing is, with the glasses too. They think the, that the glasses, glasses will glasses influence the, like, the jury as well. It's the, it's the whole Clark Kent, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's you know? The glasses right there. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Bryce and his glasses. Uh, I want to know what's uh, what's like on your acting bucket list, or do you have any upcoming projects we should be aware of? Like, what's next for you? Um, I'd like to dabble more behind camera as well. Oh, okay. I love acting. Um, so I'm working on a feature now with Amazing. my girlfriend. She's a director, so... So we're working on getting that kind of off the ground, which will be fun. Uh, auditioning a lot. I love. I'd love to play a character that's the complete opposite of sure. Bryce yeah. Max. That's yeah. kind of the goal at this moment. What does the girlfriend make of of the show and the character? She's very supportive. Yeah. Um, is she so she's in the industry. She is. Yeah, okay. She's a director. Um, immensely supportive and has watched both seasons in their entirety and has found a way to disconnect me from Bryce. Um, you have to. You have to. Yeah. Well, we, we film up north, and, and while we were filming, 
she'd come up and visit and there'd be times where I'd politely be like, hey, so this week's going to be really intense if you wouldn't mm. mind. And she's like, I get it. I'm out. And wow. she'd come back. And That's yeah. great that she understands, though. Very supportive. Yeah. 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 Um, last question on YouTube. Shadow Skew 11 says, how do you feel about the ending? Uh, there were a lot of endings. There was a lot that went on in episode yeah. 13. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So true. <laughs> in terms of, I guess, Bryce's ending, uh, it it pisses me off. But again, I I, I kind of knew it was coming because yeah. it's realistic. So I think they made the right call with that. Um, in terms of of the shooting, I'm glad nothing happened. But who knows if we did a third season? I guess. Um, I don't know. I I think it was. I think it was done well mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy with all of the little you know plot points that we kind of had yeah. all of the some of the tied up ends some of the loose ends some opened up wide yeah. open you know exactly there were a lot of fun moments too like I the 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 dance scene I think had a lot of good moments in it just like with the yeah. song coming on and the whole group coming I in know, and, and I think dancing that's just, with um, uh, it's beautiful Clay. I think uh. that's really well done this is why we need a season three. Yeah. There's so many, there's, uh, there's a lot of left, uh, questions left unanswered, do you know? Yeah. Is there a place for Hannah in season three? I feel like so much of this oh, season gosh. was about Clay letting Hannah go. Right, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. That is a really good question. I feel like he does, he sort of lets go and there's that beautiful moment where oh, she's like, it's time, I have to let you go. And yeah. then it seems like she does go. So it, it might seem odd, just season three, she's just back she's like again. There. Like, oh, but what about when that big moment happened? <laughs> right. right. She's like, now I'm here just to hang. I'm just I back wanna, again. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, wanted yeah. to see what you guys wanted to. Like, yeah. I wanted a coffee. I don't know what they would do <laughs> with that, I guess. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I love Catherine. Of course, I, if yeah. they can find a way to make it work, I think it would be amazing. Sure. Uh, but I have no idea. Sure. I have no idea. Well, congrats on an amazing season. It was. If you guys haven't yes. binged it all yet, do it. Immediately. It's on Netflix, <laughs> it's on Netflix right now. now. Go watch it. all 13 it. episodes. They're all there for you. And yeah. make sure you use those resources that are out amazing. there yes, absolutely. as please, well. Please, please, yeah. please. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Make sure that you subscribe, like, follow along with Justin on social media, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.